so since we are in the month of uh, supernatural manifestation there's just something that I want us to to learn in this place that things don't just happen things are made to happen things don't just work behind anything that is working there is someone making it to work faith does not just work it has to be made to work if you believe you know that God will do the performance but it is according to someone's faith in Luke chapter number 1 verses 37 the Bible says Luke 1 verses 4 with God nothing shall be impossible working with God to walk in the supernatural manifestation there has to be active faith working believing that God would do the wonders that we're trusting him maybe in the area of sickness and disease healing can only be made available if you believe you want to see breakthroughs in your life you have to believe there is no one that will see the manifestation of the hand of God the help of God who will not believe God and to believe God is work you have to trust him you have to walk in faith a few thoughts which I want to share with us here this evening the things that we need to make uh, available for faith to work um, the first one is that we need to know things that matter the most and that is we need to hold the word of God with a clear conscience I know we have a, we have a conscience but that conscience must be clear amen in the book of Romans chapter number 1 verses 18 Romans 1 and verses 18 the Bible says for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness so you have the truth but you are not you are not holding it in with a clear conscience it is that conscious that will make you receive the word of God to make it produce there are people that hold the truth but in a lie holding the truth in unrighteousness which the word of God is teaching us to not hold not holding the word of God in unrighteousness you are a wicked man your heart is not clear remember the parable of the sower some seeds fell on the on the pathways others on the on the rocks others all those are talking of hearts of men yes you want god to bless you but your heart is not clear yes you want god to do certain things in your life but there is untruthfulness in your life unrighteousness in your life and so it is important that we learn these things for faith to work one of the challenges the Pharisees had was that they held on to the word of God but in a lie that was the challenge they had they were so educated in the law that they missed the very essence they are things that are very important what Jesus called the weightier matters of the law the weightier matters of the law in that time yes they believed in the law they believed in 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 the god that handed the laws but not with a clear conscience so in in matthew 23 verses 23 obviously this is where the 
The Lord Jesus Christ now was rebuking them. And he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and they have omitted what? The weightier matters of the law. The weightier matters of the law. I have seen people who can pray, man. But immediately after prayer, they insult people. I have seen people who, when you meet them in church, they are very good people. But you meet them at the place of work. Meet them at home. They are not good people. God wants us to hold the truth in righteousness. They are weightier matters of the law. And those ones, he talked about judgment, mercy, and faith. And then he says to you, these you ought to have done. Not to leave the other undone. The weightier matters of the law. To them, what was important is that you hold on to the law. To them, as long as they are seen to be doing what is right, it doesn't matter who says what. To them, what was important is that they are holding on to the law. That's why they can even punish someone. All right? They can, they can look at somebody as if he's a worst sinner, but their heart is not checked. Look at the book of Mark chapter number 7. Mark chapter number 7. Again, you will see a scenario here and then came together unto him Pharisees. Pharisees. And Satan of the scribes which came from Jerusalem, they came to him. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled hands, meaning hands that were not washed, to a Pharisee, he did not care whether the food you are eating is actually correct. As long as your hands are clean. You didn't hear what I said. You see, the food that we eat may be contaminated, but to a Pharisee, he will not care whether what you are eating is contaminated as long as you have washed your hands. And so they saw the disciples, they were eating. This is why he told them, see, what enters a man does not defile him. It's what comes out of him. Your heart must be correct. And then he says, he saw disciples eating. They saw the disciples eating with hands without washed. And these guys, they picked out an issue against him. Against them. And uh, the Bible says, for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not holding they hold on to the traditions of the elders you jump to verses 9 look at verses 9 and he said unto them full well you reject the commandment of God that you keep your traditions 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 are traditions bad? no but there is a way you can hold on to a tradition. Rules are important, yes. But do you know that this is what we have done in our time? There are people that have fallen from the grace, not the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, but the grace of the laws of men. So men's rules are important. There are certain churches, there are certain places of worship you get to. A man makes a mistake they are treated like the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Am I saying that sin is supposed to be condoned? No. But do you know that there's a way that we do, sometimes we live as men, where the love of God is not reflected in our lives. I'll show you one example. Between a brother that you have in the house of God, that you have picked a quarrel with, which one is easier to reconcile with? A non-believer and the person that you worship with. You see, but you see a lot of Christians, eh? they have a, walking with bitterness. 
and you are you are walking with a heart that is unforgiving you have not forgiven men and you are coming in the house of the lord you are lifting your hands lord i worship you and the brother who you had the difference with is right with you and do you know that statistically speaking you will notice that divorce rate amongst people who call themselves born again is actually higher than people who don't even what has caused the rise in divorce is because men cannot sit down to talk over issues mm. and so you are quiet we are trusting God to help us in many areas but we do not know how to sit down and, you know, we can differ. We are human beings. Come on. I mean, we are human beings. The way I look at things is not the way you look at things. The way you look at things is not the way I look at things. But differences are not meant to separate us or widen the gap. The reason why we fail to reconcile with one another is because we hold the truth in a lie. This is why he said to them that you are rejecting the commandment of God. You are holding on to the traditions of, has anybody offended you before? Has anybody done anything wrong with you? How many of those people that have offended you, you are still friends today? We are trusting God to, to move the mountains when the bitterness in our hearts against certain men cannot be moved. We are believing God for healing when we can't. I was talking to a certain man, man of God yesterday, and I said to him, you know, when we were discussing about certain things and he mentioned something very, very, he says, no, but between, between you know, there are people whose relationships cannot be reconciled. I said, you see, if God can reconcile a person like you and me to himself, then there is nobody who is beyond reconciliation. Only Satan. And I said to him, if we can pray to move mountains and we cannot trust God to move our hearts, our faith is in question. We are trusting God to move the demonic forces out of our lives. But we have failed to move someone to move in love you see now so he taught them he says you guys you are holding on to a teaching see the righteousness of the law is not superior to the righteousness of lifestyle the righteousness of holding on to the law is not superior to the righteousness of what living that law and so in verses 13 you see what the Lord Jesus Christ said to them. He says, you are making the word of God, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions. Through your traditions which you have delivered and many such like things you do. Let me show you one example in scripture. When the Lord Jesus Christ, you remember the man whom he healed, he was born blind uh, in the book of John, chapter number 9. He was born blind and the Bible says, the disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, who sinned between this man or his wife? That's where the story started from. And Jesus Christ says, neither this man nor his fathers sinned, but that the glory of God may be revealed through this man. And what did Jesus do? He went to this man and he did what? He spat on the ground, mixed the soil with saliva, and then he put in his eyes and told this man to say, go and wash yourself. And he told him to exact the river where he was supposed to go and wash himself. But you see, I'm interested to see the reaction of a Pharisee. Jesus went and he told him to say, go and wash. And he went and he watched. The man came seeing. And that was a joyous moment. The man's eyes were opened. Let's go in verses 11. And the Bible says, he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus is the one that did this to me. He anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go and go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received. Was that a miracle? 
That was a miracle. Let's continue. Verses 12. Then said they unto him, where is he? And he says, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees him a full time that was blind. Look at this. They took the man by the hand and took him to the most controversial group of people and say, hey, there is a miracle that has happened in our time, but we need to investigate this miracle. Have you seen this? People are willing to investigate your solution than they want to investigate your source of your problems. That, this is the problem. People that do not want to know the source of your struggles, they want to investigate the source of your breakthrough. There are, there are few people who are interested to know what demons are associated with your struggle, with your poverty. Wait until you have a breakthrough. You will see the Pharisees will gather. No, 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 no. He has to explain. Where did he get this? How did it happen? Have you seen? We have Pharisees in the church. And so they gathered here and they took this man to the Pharisees. And listen to this. The Pharisees, they will use the law. They will use the word. <laughs> then again the Pharisees asked the man. Listen to that verse of scripture, verse 13. They asked the man. Alright, let's continue, verses 14. And it was that it was a Sabbath and you know it was enshrined in that law. It was done. And our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, how I love him. He had to heal this man, not on any other day. Not during the midweek service. It was on the Sabbath day. That's when he healed him. And uh, this guy received his sight. Verses 15. And again, the Pharisees asked this man how he received his sight. And he said unto him, this man put clay upon my eyes and I washed and now you see what happened. Let's continue. There's something I'm showing you. Therefore say to some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. You see, people don't care the good you may be doing. As long as it does not fit their prescription of how it's supposed to be done. As long as it is, the, listen, you have to be very careful with the people that you are meeting. You may have them in the church. You may have them in your circle, friends. They can discourage you that even the ministry of God that is supposed to provide solution to your life cannot even work because they are holding on to something that is so dangerous. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? There was a division among themselves. Have you seen? Let's continue. Verse. They said unto the blind man, what said thou then of him that opened thine eyes? And he said, he's a prophet, my friend. He is a man of God. He is a man of God. Now, let's jump to verses 35 of the same passage of scripture. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, do you believe on the son of God? And he said, he answered and said, who is he, Lord? Even the man that was healed did not believe, did not even know. But I just wanted to show you a picture that there are people that are not willing to trust God. And if something happens supernaturally, they will come up with a theology. Do you know why miracles vanished? Do you know why signs and wonders are a rare experience in many of our worship services? It is because we took, we took these signs and wonders into a, a, a place of discussion. We started now investigating even what, I'm not saying that we shouldn't test every spirit scripture tells us. But there's a place where you get to where you can you can be looking at, can God really do such a thing? Are you sure God can do it? Other people will start saying, and in the, the majority will say, it can never be done. 
And if as long as there are people that say it can never be done, you will see that even if God was to move among the men, he will just withhold. And that's the more reason why diseases that were supposed to be healed of, miraculously, men are struggling to come out of it. Simple things that men are supposed to have control over. Men cannot believe God over them. How many of us are in a situation that if only we trusted God, huh? if only we believed God, that thing can, can be a thing of the past with no time. But because we have not created room within our hearts to believe him, we have other views. As Jesus said, you have destroyed the work of God because of your unbelief. Number two, talking about the weightier matters of the law, is that you need to have love in your heart. Love. Love. Faith will never work where there is no love. This love is upward and vertically. Horizontally and vertically. Love God and man. This is very important. Galatians chapter number 5 verse 6. The Bible says, For faith worketh by love. It is faith that empowers prayer. And it is prayer or faith that moves mountains. But if your faith does not have love, your faith will not produce. Faith worketh by love. Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 15. Ephesians 4 and verses 15. The Bible says, but speaking the truth in love. If, if your focus is not correct, if your focus is not, is not correct, you will not produce the result that you need. The Bible says we need to speak the truth in love. Those of us that are preaching the word of God to the people, this is something that we have to tell, tell ourselves every time. Every time again. Whatever that you do, love must actually be the driving force. Why you do what you do is that there is love. And I've seen a number of people that have started these things called ministry, but love is not the reason. They do not love God. And the reason men don't love God is that they, they, they just want... There's a pastor, I was told in somewhere in some Western African country, who won a lotto and he closed the church. You understand? He won a lotto and he did what? He closed the church. And the man came out so clear and sincerely and he said, you know what? I, I, I went into ministry because of... I just wanted money. I wanted to make something out of this thing. You see, ministry is not an industry. God does not, let me tell you, ministry is not an industry. We are serving God. And if you're serving God, is not driven by love. I have seen ministers of the gospel who says, I'm not saying that you should take advantage of ministers of the gospel. But there are people that can never, I'm talking about even musicians, that will not accept an invitation if you don't tell them and you don't give them a deposit. They even give a quotation like this. This is how much you are supposed to pay me. Where is love? It's the more reason why in places where men are economically weak, the gospel is weak in those areas. The reason is because men concentrate in areas they know they can extract something. Faith worketh by love. Do you know that God can send you into uh, missions and he, he, he just says, you just go, my friend. Do you think those men that wielded power like Elijah they went to the mountain, they lived in the mountain, difficult lives. We are men that didn't like themselves. They loved God above themselves. How much love do we have for God? And how much love do we have for people? Our faith cannot move anything, not even Marelia, if your faith is not anchored on the foundation of love. 
Number three, you need to deal with unbelief. Unbelief, it blocks answers. Unbelief blocks answers to prayer. Even if God was to do it, but because you have room for unbelief in your heart, God will just not allow it to happen in your life. Unbelief. In Hebrews chapter number 4, verses 1, beginning you will see, the Bible says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into rest. Any of you should come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Because they did not receive it with faith. It was not mixed with faith. As I'm sharing God's word, every day we hear the word of God. How much do we trust God that can provoke a supernatural manifestation? You have to believe in God. You have to deal with unbelief. Number four is that you need to deal with the carnal mindset. A natural mindset. God is spirit. And God does not operate like a human being. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so I want you to understand that if God wants to move, you can't pick a calculator, sit down and start saying, okay, how it is going to happen. Then God will not be involved. Are you getting what I'm saying? In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verses 14, the Bible says a natural man, a natural man does not receive the things of the spirit. Healing comes from the spirit. Prosperity comes from the spirit. Doors open supernaturally. But if you are a natural person, these things will not be happening in your life. A natural, if you are a natural man, it will be hard for you to see the help of God. He says he does not receive the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness unto him. And the Bible says, he neither, neither can he know them because they are spiritually descent. Do you believe in God? You see, trusting God makes a man look like he's a crazy person. Mm. I was with a certain man of God. He visited us when we were in the tent and he only came yesterday. Of course, he passed here when we were just doing the foundation. And when he stood outside there, he said to me, Hey! This can only be God. But listen to me, it has always been God. But he just needed a vessel that can trust him and believe that with God, all things are possible. Where you are right now, God can shift you. God can move you. But you must believe in him that he can really move you. Am I speaking to somebody here now? See the sickness in your body, huh? If you've been battling with something in your body, I want you to know that God can move that thing out. That thing, I believe that God can move it out. But the problem is that we are too natural. We are too natural. We begin, many of us here, God economically can move us. He can shift. There's what we call supernatural uh, prosperity. Yes. God, that's why Isaac in Femine, he planted. And he harvested a hundredfold. That the Philist, the Bible says the Philistines, they envied him. The man moved forward. He worked great. He became so strange, strong and became a stranger amongst the inhabitants of the land. Listen to me. Beloved, it is very possible. Here in this nation, God can raise men and women that can break the limitations that have been existing in the land. I also want to see Zambians on aircraft. I thought I would hear an amen. 
You see, the problem of us growing up in Obama and growing up in Charleston, you begin to calculate. You are used to get on a yango. You are used to get into town on a you know, flash bus. And then you are asking yourself, even if this thing, even if God was to open the windows of heaven, can this be possible? And I'm talking to you that all things are to him that believes. You have to deal with unbelief. The reason why we are not seeing the help of God is because we are stuck in unbelief. You see, if things are not working for your neighbor, it does not mean that they cannot work for you. Mashaka Pado Bahasa. I need to pump this thing in somebody so that we pray. And then we have assurance that we are receiving the things that we are trusting God for. And believe. Number five. Is that you need to have confidence in the word of God. Hmm. Confidence. Confidence. Trust in the word of God. Hebrews 10, 35. The Bible says, let us not cast away the confidence. Your confidence which has great recompense of reward. I love the confidence of children. I love conf confidence of children. Children have good confidence in their parents. There is, to be honest with you, every parent is a hero in the life of his child. Most children, they look to their parents. They just know. Even if a father cannot do it, a child will still say, I know my dad is going to do this. Now, you are a child of God. You are a believer in God. The Bible says, let us not cast away the confidence, which has got great rewards. By you trusting in God, holding on to God, just know. Even if things are not working my order, you just say, no, 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 I know. I know, sir. It will happen. I was showing you this thing, the, the picture of this thing when we were in the tent. I'm showing you the picture. Others were thinking, it was my elder was saying, I, me, I was thinking, pastor, is also coming on my end. I'm a pastor capturing pictures and he wants to show us. It was not for entertainment. It is to show you that this thing, and if you can see it, you can have it. Now, the confidence that thing came with was that every morning I wake up in the morning, I look at it, I know it will be done. I know it will drop. I know it will manifest. You see, if I, was, if I were you, I can even, I was going to go forward and do something beyond Paint the picture I want to see of the future. I want to, I, I can design something. Today now you can even put it in animation. You can put it there. You are watching. You are looking at it every day. It begins to build the confidence in you. There is nothing. If you, you see what has happened in this short time. It is a testimony and a message that all things are possible. Do you want to do a farm? Go ahead, do something like that. And every time you have workers that are around there, they look like cartoons. But you know that these are real employees. You know that it will be done. Am I communicating to somebody here? You know that it will be done. The problem is that, you know, when we enter into ourselves, we see small things. But if you see something, and you, it just generates, you have confidence. And every time you are praying, the way you live your life today shows us the confidence you have. The way you live your life. It was when we were in the house. I will prepare for the message in the bedroom to come and preach it in the living room. But I will come out with a suit. Ask my wife. I come out with a suit and said we are going to for a service. From where? From the bedroom. And then we come there, I said, no, let's start. Shall we start? No instrument? No what? But I am in a suit. 
When's the service? This envelope you are seeing on this is not the first time. Confidence. Let us not cast away the confidence. Reveal, bread. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you to know that where we are is not the final destination. We are just passing through. It's like we are at Manda Hill. We are still on a way. We are going somewhere. But I remember there are photos there that you will see where you will see these chairs like this. And we know we had more chairs than the people. And when we look at it every time, we declared the first prayer and fasting. We started on Sunday ministry, the first service. And one of the announcements was, this coming Wednesday, we are waiting upon the Lord in prayers and fasting. Church which is inside the house. I got an office. My wife, we went to National Housing Authority. There was no paper. Hmm? There was no paper. That was one of the first meetings that we were having in the house. That is 2015. I was wearing a suit. But many of us, because we lack confidence in God, we, we miss the rewards because we are not ready for the manifestation. I got an office at Findeco House. Church was where? In Obama. I, I was preaching, coming from the living, I mean, from the bedroom to preach in the living room, but office is at Findeco House. Somebody asked me a question. Is there any reason why you should get an office? I said, the one who called me, the Bible says he's faithful. And he's the one responsible to do it. My own is to believe him. I trust him. And I'll go to the, to the there was nothing in that office. There was, there was, the office had no ventilation. Proper circulation of air. I had, you remember the office? I, the office, I had a chair like this. So if you see me working like this one, it's not that I started today. This is not when I started working. And I would report in that office, 8 o'clock in the morning, and leave at 17. Let us not cast out, you want the supernatural manifestation. But you wake up at 10 o'clock. You don't pray. You don't have an office. You are trusting God. You need to create room for the supernatural manifestation. I don't know whether I'm communicating to somebody here now. We are trusting God for manifestation of signs and wonders in our lives. We cannot trust him. We opened an office and I would go there at lunchtime I go you know to buy something I get back to the office sometimes I'll come into the office and I find that the the, the scone I left that I'll come and eat it the, the rats they have eaten I, I sometimes I'd come and I would find that the water I left my elders the rats had no respect they were even even the water bottle I said father but you know that because of this, you know, another man of God who is trusting God to show him things, he is just sleeping, watching those movies, watching things. You are joking. You are joking. Things don't just happen. Behind anything that is working, there is someone that is working. There are many of us here, if we look at the way we are carrying, we carry ourselves. Choir, if you want to sing international, your rehearsal must shift to international level. You're not even saying amen. Listen, if you want to see God to shift you, shift in the way you do things. The protocol that I hear. There's a church I know. The standards are on top. That even non-believers, even if they don't like God, by just looking at the way you do things, they will say, surely, this guy must know his God very well. This guy must know his God very well. 
Let us not cast away our confidence. It has got great rewards. I know that I am not a local man seeking to find space at the international space. No. I'm telling you. That's why we changed. Have you seen this kapupit which is there? You will find it in big auditoriums. What are we trying? We are rehearsing. How it will be like when we get, the Lord is shifting somebody here now. I said the Lord is shifting. You, you are running business. You don't even have an account. You don't even know how the inside of a bank hole looks like. But meanwhile, you are praying prayers for God. Promote me. Lord, open doors. God will open doors. Where, is he going? Where are you going to put those things that God wants to release in your life? Where, where? You see now here, we have created room even on top. They are coming. Somebody said they are coming. Yeah. Somebody say it like you mean it. Say they are coming. Yeah. They are on their way. Yeah. Say they are on their way. Mashaka pateke padahasa. You see, let us not cast away the confidence. Number five, you need to have the staying power in the word. Number six, the staying power. Let the scriptures be your ground. Do not waver. You should have the staying power. You know the staying power. Like a bulldog. Is that a bulldog? That dog when it bites. I saw something, a video, where that thing, you know, it beat someone and there's somebody who came with a whip. He was hammering it, but that thing was holding. Hi. I said, this kind of faith, staying power. Things are not working, but you are holding on. You look like a crazy person in the eyes of other men. But you have decided not to let go. Stay in power. Do not waver. When the Bible says, he staggered not at the promises of God. Abraham, you look. I am speaking to somebody here now. You are receiving this word now. You are receiving this word right now. In the book of Romans chapter number 4 verses 20. The Bible says of Abraham that he staggered not. At the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. The man kept on holding on to God. He kept on holding on to God like a bulldog. Everything is going down except you. <laughs> that, is, that is a staying power. That is a staying power. Your job, your things, you look at your money, you don't have money, you don't have this. Maybe your health, you are challenged. But you have decided not to give in to the suggestions of Satan. That is the staying power. The woman with an issue of blood, she said, if only I could touch the hem of his garment. That is this. She built it, it was within her spirit. And so even though she was weak in the, in the flesh, she decided not to agree with that reality. Her reality was that there is a promise that, that assures me my healing. Stay in power. Stay in the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. The Bible says in the book of uh, James chapter number 1 verses 5 to 8. The Bible talks about if any man lacketh wisdom, let him ask God. So if you know that you have a challenge... There are people, joblessness just, joblessness has made them into thieves. Others have become con men, dangerous con men. That is a person who does not have a staying power. Let me tell you, there are seasons. Let me say it again, they are what? They are what? They are what? You must know what to do in each and every season. And no season comes to stay. Every season comes and it goes. Now we are entering into the cold season. We are coming from a rainy season. Now, you must have the wisdom of what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm speaking to somebody here now. Do you trust God for God to open doors for you? Do you believe that God will open doors for you? 
Young lady, listen to this. That nobody is coming to propose you love does not mean that you are not worth. Yours has not come. I'm just telling you. Yours is coming. You need to have a staying power. But a lot of young ladies are looking for love in wrong places. Can you hold on to that? I've heard of a testimony of a, a, a lady that got married. She was still a virgin at 40. Staying power. That everybody is compromising around you does not mean that you should compromise. Staying power. Are you getting what I'm saying? If any man lacketh wisdom, let him ask. God who gives without holding back. He gives without holding back. Look at verse 6. The Bible says this, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Wavering is to have, you have a ground, yes, but you have other grounds. You have ground. You receive instruction. Now you get what I'm saying. You receive instruction. Now, there are so many people that come to God who have many grounds. They have a witch doctor. They have uncles. They have aunties. They have friends. There are some of us, we only have God. If God does not come through for us, we are done. We only have one direction. And the direction is the direction of God. If it, that's why David says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help only comes from there. He says, let him ask in faith without wavering. To waver is to stagger. To waver is to move from one position like a drunk man. He is moving, but he is staggering. Things are working, you are holding your position. You see, this is what I want to see happen in our lives. I want us to hold this. When things are working, you are holding on. Things seem not to be, to be working, you are holding on. I remember at home when we were going through, it's a very wonderful time. We changed the confession, even our children. We taught our children to say, see, you are going, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about something very important here. And I'm talking to them, we, say, we change the way we talk. Mini Miu is finished. They even, they will, if they forget, they will sit down quietly to remember what were we told to say. When the food is, I mean, bread is finished. You don't say it's finished here. You have to say, no, daddy, we have a lot of bread. Too much bread, daddy. I will know. I will know that what you are saying is that we need to replenish the, the, the kitchen. We finish what we have because by the way we do things, we don't have. We have always been saying revealed word is a blessed church. Oh, if you came to that place in the tent, you will see me preach like this. And I will say, it's better you you know me now. Because a time is coming. Hi. When my secretary <laughs> will have a secretary. I, I'm saying a time is coming. And I'm not joking. I have not changed. I don't stagger. The same word I preached that time is coming back. And I'm saying, know me today. Because a time is coming. I well, want to see the, the apostles' offices on the 11th floor. But you are, there are checkpoints. Kai, it may sound like this person is arrogant, but do you know that faith does not... Oh, your prayer we will not deliver if it will not be backed by faith. Trust God. My God. Listen to me now. You who is listening to what I'm saying here now, you will soon find yourself at another place and you'll be asking yourself, how did I get to where I am here today? Oh, yeah, ba, ba, ba. But this is what empowers prayer. This is what empowers things to deliver. On time. We were daring the owners of this land. Said, how much is this piece of land? We're told 750. Said, no, you can do better, mama. You can do better. 
Sir, we, we had no money. What buys is not money. Yes. Ah, this, is, this is so crucial. I said, Mama, you can. I was with my wife, the two of us. This one is a committee. As in a full committee. I say, committee member, what are you saying? And then we say, um, 750, you can do better. Um, please reduce. Are you interested? And are you sure? I said, go, please reduce. We will show you that we are serious. Ha! Huh. That woman, she reduced it to 530. Then she says, I have brought, we have agreed that it will be 530. 550, yes. No, 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 no. 500. Then she says, no, you will do with the legal fees. So 30,000 is on you. So I said, okay, fine. It's okay, 530. But give us the terms of payment. Don't try this at home. If you do not have, if you know that you, all you do is eat and eat and eat and watch cartoons and work naked women. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, okay, let's go ahead. We had 5,000 in the church account. How much? Do you know what 5,000 can do you? But the, the, the story, the testimony of revealed word is a testimony that with God, all things are possible. I just believe, I would even say to, to, to the church, and I said, we told her that, we will give you. To be honest with you, we never had anywhere else even after she said, okay, now we're going to, I, I said, Jesus, I said what? Now, reality, I needed to look at certain things. I said, what did I just say? You know my mouth, oh, me, I say it, and I see it. Somebody here, you are coming out of your struggles in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, you are coming out of your struggles in the name of Jesus told that woman please do a contract and my wife said you know what read that document she was reading it even where there's no mistake we are at least we should find at least we should buy time until heaven responds and you know it was so correct that there were a few errors to correct and to be honest with you the first deposit for this project was made that was April 2017. April. We transferred that kind of money. And that woman received it. It was half. You know, there are people who are lazy to believe God. You know, they have come up with all manner of stories. No, Pastor Rawa this. Pastor Rawa this. As long as you do not want to learn you will not come out of Listen, anyone who you are seeing making progress has a story you need to learn from. I'm telling you. No, Pastor Rawa, he used his, lift, he used his terminal benefits. I mean, even if I had that kind of money, can I take it to the ministry like this? No, I can't. I also have children. I have a wife also. I have my mother. I never did that. But people will say, no, he used this money. Even if I had money, how much money can we? Listen, learn to trust God. Learn to trust God. Why have I taken time to explain this thing? Do you know why prayer does not seem to work in many people's lives? It's because it lacketh the faith power. So you can have an overnight. If you do not have faith, it will be a waste of effort. But you can pray for an hour and you are trusting God. You will see God move. Oh, let me wind up this thing and then we pray. I lift my eyes to the hills. Whence cometh my help? I was discussing so with my in the in the tent. Then my wife said, one day. I see my wife. That time is coming. That time is coming. 
that I'm sitting like this one and I am going to the where the pilot is you see the, we, we made the mistake we should have actually gone to Italy we, we, we are on our way to Nigeria no connect first to Buerede first yes I want to I want that I want that pilot like Mopanga mistake no take us back to Zambia you can't try that one now because you have to go through the normal where human beings pass oh I am praying for somebody here to catch it God told me that one of your sons is going to build a bank as in as in I have been talking about this thing a bank what you see as the, these banks that you have taken money to God told me he told me this hey. and so i believe it hey. i believe it hey. uh, one of your children uh, is going to build a multi corporation uh, and it, it will shock this the, where the top banks are this one is going to be among them hey. it's just going to be among them listen to me all things are possible all things are possible as i'm speaking this is a prayer before June comes, somebody's story would have already changed. Before December, somebody's story would have already changed. Before the transfiguration, somebody's story would have already changed. And I will hear good news. Please stand on your feet. I will seek your face. <laughs> I, I said it here that when you see TDJX here, don't be surprised. Because that time is coming when men will be looking for them. Who is this man? Where is this person coming from? Lift your hands before the Lord and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Call upon your name, Jesus. All I want is you. In the name of Jesus. Now listen to this. That's James chapter number one. He says, let him ask in faith. I don't know what you came here with as a prayer request. As a, as a need. He says, let him ask in faith. And then he says, a double-minded person. The Bible says he's unstable. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And then he says, let that man, verses 9, let that, a double-minded person is unstable. He does not hold his own ground. There, there are a lot of Christians who have gone to witch doctors because they think God has delayed. There are a lot of people that have gone into corruption because they feel like that's the only way they can have the money they are looking for. God wants you to trust him. God wants you to trust him. And I want you to take a few minutes here just to pray. I know you are trusting God for something. You are believing God for that issue. Maybe it is for your, your healing, your deliverance, your restoration. You, you are believing God for something. This is a moment. I want you to know that by trusting God, there's going to be a shift in your life. Things are going to move in your life. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a change. In the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up a voice and pray. Everybody pray. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Everybody pray. I want you to take your petitions before the Lord. Take them before the Lord. Take them before the Lord. Take them before the Lord. And pray. La pate ke pele bo saka papa te ka baba hasa le peto so pete ke to se ke te ke bada hasa aya la pate ke bele baba baba has se le ke baba bada bada has ke le bo 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 come on somebody lift up a voice and pray pray like a believer pray like somebody
someone that knows that God is a prayer answering God. That God is answering your prayers. He's answering your prayers this morning, this evening. Something is moving. 
la mande que le va a venir a hacer de la nada más más a que la mamá 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 de la 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 mamá Somebody lift your voice and pray. Come on, somebody lift your voice and pray one more time. in the name of Jesus now listen to this faith is a weapon that's why the Bible says first John chapter 5 verses 14 the Bible says this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us this is a confidence faith can deliver anything can heal anybody that is sick it doesn't matter what the condition is you can have cancer you can have malaria you can have you can have whatever disease faith can stop it and it takes faith to shut the mouths of lions I don't know what devils have risen against you. Hebrews chapter number 11 verses 33. There about the Bible says. What shall I most say? Verses 30. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. After they were compassed about seven days. By faith they hallowed. Let's go to verses 32. And what what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David and also of Samson and of the prophets. The Bible says, and who through faith subdued kingdoms and wrote righteousness. They obtained the promises and they stopped. The other version said they shut the mouths of lions. It was faith that Daniel was not hurt in the lions, but it was by faith. They stopped the mouths of lions. You can stop the witches and wizards, you can stop them. You can stop them. He says, You have persecuted everybody else, but not me. You have entered in many people's homes, but not my home. I, I, I stop you today in the name of Jesus. It is faith. It's by faith. Somebody here, you are stopping something in your life. You are stopping it. You are stopping it. This nonsense that has been happening in your life. Things have been happening and men have been watching. You are going to pray tonight. You are going to pray. Whatever is not planted by God in my father's house, I have put it. That is my faith. I have put this sickness. I have put premature death. I have put whatever has been stopping me. I have put it. In the name of Jesus, are you willing to pray? It is by faith. Mark 11, 23, the Bible says, Verily I say unto you that whosoever will say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. Your mountain may not look like my mountain. Your situation may not look like my your neighbor's situation. But it is still a mountain. Whosoever who say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. I want you to look at your situation. That is a mountain. Whatever the name, 
it has it is a mountain so you bring it address it like a mountain address it like a mountain address it like a mountain you can choose whether you want to go around it but I'm, I want to advise you mountains you go, don't go around them you speak to the mountains according to scripture whosoever who say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea you sickness that has been claiming people in my father's house I uproot you now and I cast you into the sea you premature death I uproot you now and I cast you into the sea you stagnation I uproot you now I cast you into a sea come on lift your voice and begin to pray face your situation lift your voice and begin to pray Doce gota bada, leka doce kapa kaba deka da, leka soka tade kadeus, lebo saka bada dera dalia, lada dala bus. Come on, someone lift your voice and pray. There's something that is moving here. There's something that is changing right here. Something that is shifting right here. Every form of limitation, every form of stagnation, every form of frustration. I approach you now. I approach you now from the roots. Alamante Kebalamada Hassa. chapter number 28 and verses 9 and 10 Proverbs sorry Job chapter number 28 Job 28 verses 9 and 10 he puts forth his hand upon the rock and he overturneth the mountains by the root God Put his hand, no matter how hard the situation is, and by his authority, 
He overturns the mountains. Whatever had a legal ground in your family, God overturns it now. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands and pray. Say, my Father and my God, any demonic planting in my father's house by the authority and power of your name, I uproot it now in the name of Jesus. You said to this, the Bible says concerning Elijah that he was a man like us, like you and me. He also struggled with his flesh. The Bible says he, had, he was a man of like passions, like all of us. James chapter number 5, verse 17. The man prayed that it would not rain, and for three and a half years, it did not rain. The Bible says he prayed again, and the heavens gave up the rains. We are going to pray again. Mama, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. I now whatever is not of the, the will of God in your life today it shall be uprooted lift your hands and pray say my father and my God say every demonic orchestration in my life in my family in my ministry in my marriage in my business I command let it be uprooted now in the name of Jesus anything that is not allowed by God and is operating in my life let it be uprooted now in the name of Jesus say my father my God any demonic planting in my life in my family I uproot it now in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray a prayer Son of the living, it is well with you. Lift your voice and pray. Masaka Baba Badas. Yelama Mana 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 Badas. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. In Jesus' name, before we get to the communion, there's something that is evident about us here in this nation. You know, there's a spirit of limitation where men just don't make. If you get to a certain level, the ones that will pull you down are people in the land. That thing is so real in this nation. We are pulling it down. Somebody say amen. I said you will go up and you will keep on rising. I said you will go up. You will keep rising in the name of Jesus. You see, as we pray this prayer, please pray to God that Lord, is there anyone around my life who wouldn't want to see me succeed? <laughs> no, no, because there are certain people you call friends because of the level where you are now. They want to frustrate you. They want to pull you down when you succeed. Lord, if there is such a person in my life, help them out of my life. In the name of Jesus. 
because by all means you must make progress now if you are the one that fights yourself you're on your own by all means you must make progress I am praying for you sincerely that God should lift you and promote you should be so visible but there is something in this nation it does not allow people you to hit certain ceiling that's the reason why we want to pray in this place where this church is Charleston, Obama, what, what. There are a lot of forces that wouldn't want to see progress. But that will not stop us making progress. I want you to lift up your voice. Whether it is called the territorial spirit, whether it is an ancestral altar, whether it is a shrine from the pit of hell, there's a shrine of a sangoma that they are doing things against your life. Today, by the authority of God, we set it on fire. I said we set it on fire. We set it on fire. We set it on fire. Say, my God and my Father, in the name of Jesus, every force of limitation in this land, powers of darkness that refuse men to succeed and make progress, I bring it down today. In the name of Jesus, every limitation, I break you now. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, stretch your hands here. Every witchcraft power sitting on your life, satanic voices, demonic voices, demonic verdicts over your life. I decree they are cancelled in the name of Jesus. Every limitation on you is cancelled in the name of Jesus. And I announce that you will progress. You are making progress. You are making progress. I said you are making progress. I said you are making progress. You are coming out of that limitation. In the name of Jesus. Now they overcame him, the Bible says, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives unto death. Jesus Christ when he died you must know that Christianity what makes our faith unique and powerful is because it is by the blood of Jesus Matthew 26 verses 26 that night when they were sitting Jesus he took the bread and he blessed it and he gave it to them he said this is my body he take this is my body this is my body but when he took the cup the Bible says when he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it because why? For this is, this is my blood of the new covenant or testament which is shed for many for the remission of sin. We are purchased by the blood of Jesus. We are God's property. We are not of our own. We are not owned by ancestral altars we are owned by Calvary Jesus purchased us and the Bible says that the blood shall be for a token Exodus chapter number 12 it shall be a token verses 13 and 14 the blood a token is a payment a payment was made and you don't purchase an item twice anything that you purchase twice is an illegal that is an illegal transaction this thing we paid for it once and the blood shall be unto you to you for a token upon the houses where you are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the Bible says and the plague shall not come those of you that remember during COVID period we emphasized a lot on this verse of scripture and the plague of COVID it passed see the plague of premature death will 
pass you. The plague of stagnation will pass you. Because you hide under the blood. And so tonight as we are having this Holy Communion, believe in the finished work of what Jesus did on the cross. And just know that it was your payment. It was payment. There is a receipt. Oh, yeah, Allah, ba, 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 ba. The plague. God wanted to plague you with something. But Jesus, blood was enough to cover. Lift your hands. I want you to pray to God. Lord, as I'm receiving this communion tonight, let your blood speak in my life, in my affairs. Let your blood speak over my family. Let your blood speak over my marriage. Let your blood speak over the revealed word in the name of Jesus. Let your blood speak over the church. And we're going to anoint. Pastor, you're going to anoint the church? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Let your blood speak over the church in the name of Jesus. When anything that is attacking men come near and seize the blood, it will not succeed in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray over this emblem. We decree and consecrate it as the blood of Jesus. We believe that, Lord, as we receive it by faith, believing in what you have done, let the sick be healed, the bound be set free, let yokes be broken. And Lord, as we apply over this house tonight, let this house be exempted from any demonic attacks. In the name of Jesus, we speak by the authority of your name, Jesus. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. And somebody lift your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. As you are receiving the emblems, come on. We may be seated as we partake. And if you have done so, quickly package your offering. Quickly package your offering. It is time to give. Let us pray together. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name. We give you praise. Thank you for an opportunity to give to you. We pray that Jehovah, as we give to you, you will multiply our harvest in the name of Jesus. And that, Father, our lives will never be the same again. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's just appreciate God for what he has done today, the way he has spoken to us, and trust him that our lives are not going to be the same even as we go back home. Father, we want to appreciate you. We honor your name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Let your name alone be glorified. Thank you for the word you have given us today. Thank you for speaking to us in such an awesome, awesome manner. We pray, King of glory, that Father, even as we shall leave this place, your presence will go before us. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will continue to stir our hearts unto good works. You will continue to stir our spirits unto good works. That we will not fail you in any way. Instead, Jehovah God, that Father, we will make that light that is in us to shine to the ends of the world. We pray that Jehovah, you continue to watch over us this week, even as we go. Let your presence overshadow us. Let there be preservation upon each and every one of us. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace together. Surely, God's goodness, all the days of us, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 2023 of expressing the essence of the kingdom of God.